Within the practice of British criminal law, use of restorative justice is very much on the rise. The process, wherein perpetrators are encouraged to make contact with their victims in order to foster closure, is a highly controversial technique. Rather than lengthy prison sentences, supporters of this method believe that true rehabilitation can only come once those affected have faced up to the consequences of their crimes. Critics, however, argue that restorative justice is too lenient and allows criminals to avoid serious punishment. One family from Wiltshire have experienced the process firsthand. Four years ago, whilst walking home from football training, 23-year-old Elliot Sutherland was fatally struck by a drink driver. Behind the wheel was 21-year-old Callum Reynolds, who, at the time, was a long-term job seeker of no fixed address. Callum received a sentence of six years, of which he served half, before being released on good behaviour. It was at this time this extraordinary journey of healing began, and so I recently caught up with both Callum and the Sutherland family to find out more. Before the night of the crash, I was a husk of a man. I had no job, I had no family, I had no prospects. Honestly, I thought that my life had no meaning, that I should just chuck it all in. I remember that I downed four cans of lager before going out. What happened next was a bit of a blur. So when did it dawn on you that you'd taken somebody's life? Well, it took a while to sink in. I remember being told that he died, but I kept forgetting about it, to be honest with you. I got out for a day's out, and then it just popped back into my mind when I got back. Proper sport, a good few nights out, that did. And of course, it wasn't just the victim's life you'd ruined. You'd ruined your own, too. Nah, I wouldn't go that far. It was a bit annoying having to go to prison and that, but it certainly added something to my CV. Are you looking for work at the moment? Not anymore. A little while ago, I accepted a role at Elliot's old company. A couple of pay grades above him, actually. They've been brilliant. They really have. They said that my experience of working in the prison laundry room really showed my adaptability. It sounds like you're doing pretty well. That's encouraging. If you could go back and speak to your past self before the collision, what, what would you say? I think I'll just stay quiet. I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason and I wouldn't want to upset what God has planned for me. No mother expects to bury her son, but that's exactly the position you found yourself in. Tell me, how difficult was it to arrange Elliot's funeral? Extremely difficult. It was such a ball ache to find a day that worked for everyone. Then I had to ring up for the flowers, the catering, the transport. I wouldn't recommend it. You obviously had no choice. It's what all good parents do. It must have taken a lot out of you. Yeah, about five grand. But Callum's uncle's an undertaker, funnily enough, so that worked out quite well, and he was able to book us in straight after another service, so that saved us a lot of hanging around. Is there anything you feel like you could have done differently? Mm, I mean, looking back, I wish I'd turned the life support off sooner. Because you feel it caused unnecessary suffering to Elliot? Oh, no, we were due to go on holiday to Lanzarote for a week. We had to fly out later because of him. If he'd passed away earlier, we could have got out there by the weekend. We missed a lot of the excursions. As Elliot's father, do you have any regrets when you look back to the weeks before his passing? I told him he should have learnt to drive. This wouldn't have happened if he'd got his licence. It was because he insisted on walking, which is all the more senseless when there's such a great range of new and used cars available nowadays. You believe he'd still be alive today if he drove? For sure. We booked him some starter lessons for his birthday, even picked out a first car for him. An immaculate Seat Leon on Auto Trader. 88,000 miles, just one previous owner, low tax. You'd be a fool to pass that up. Do you not think that a drink driver would have taken Elliot's life regardless of how he travelled? No, not at all. The Seat Leon boasts a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. 
The dashboard contains full 360-degree airbag coverage. He'd have been fine had he just passed his test. I think the worst part of this tragedy is that so many of these cars require no deposit, with nothing to pay for the first six months. There really is no excuse. I understand that after a crime such as this, it's quite common to feel as though you might want to physically hurt the perpetrator. Has this ever crossed your mind? Hurt Callum? God, no. Lovely lad. He drives a BMW 3 Series, alloy wheels as standard, hybrid electric motor, 156 brake horsepower. Great ride it is. It's a company car through his work. I'm sure if you ask nicely, he'll show you it. You were Elliot's girlfriend, is that is that correct? I was, yes. That must have been exceptionally hard for you. How did you cope in the months following the incident? I won't lie. They were a really dark time for me. There were a lot of, how can I put it, well-meaning loved ones who offered their support, but I just found it so overwhelming. So you felt as though you had no one to turn to? Well, I wouldn't say no one. Callum was great with me. He was a real rock of support. A shoulder to cry on. Oh, right. So so you actually used your boyfriend's killer as a kind of, um, as a kind of confidant. <laughs> it's been a bit more than a confidant. Over the course of our chats in prison, we began to discover that we had quite a lot in common. In fact, unlike with Elliot, Callum seems to genuinely understand my needs and, and my goals. I'm surprised to hear that. Do you, do you feel like you may see Callum again, even as the restorative justice process comes to an end? <laughs> I would hope so. He proposed to me last Valentine's Day, and I said, Yes! Oh, do you want to see the ring? There can be no doubt that Elliot's death has left an irreparable hole in the heart of the Sutherland family. But restorative justice, whilst not cure, has seemingly allowed his grieving relatives the opportunity to come to terms with their loss. If I may ask you all one final question, do you feel you've benefited from this pioneering course of justice? Absolutely. 100%. Definitely. Uh, it's been great for me. 